Hey, what's up everybody? Michael DiTullo here. Welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be talking about the Bang & Olufsen Bayo Sound Explorer. Before I get into that, I want to talk about the first Bang & Olufsen product I ever got. And it wasn't a speaker, it was this. Bang & Olufsen bottle opener. The story behind this was when I was a design student in the 90s, I was up in Boston, there was a Bang & Olufsen store uh, out on Newberry Street at the time, I think, and I was just ogling the products, just going over every little detail, and I think I just probably was just, you know, hanging around the place a little bit too much, so to get me to scram, the, uh, the salesperson gave me one of these, which apparently, as, as he said back then, is something they gave to everyone that bought a Bang & Olufsen product, and I've had it ever since. That was probably 25 years ago. But today we'll be talking about another Bang & Olufsen product with metal construction, Bayo Sound Explore. All right, let's jump into it. First step, let's take a, a flip through the packaging. Nothing too crazy here, simple uh, outer matte box, no UV printing or anything like that, but some nice lifestyle imagery um, of the product, like my my old Boom Swimmer. This is also fully waterproof, which is nice, uh, which I believe that means to be to be um, classified as waterproof. I think it has to be at least IP level seven, so it needs to be so fully submersible. Um, not too much other information on the packaging, just again, hitting the waterproof information here on the back, and then as you would expect with Bang & Olufsen supposedly superior sound, a lifestyle image, nothing too crazy, Bluetooth 5.2, some certifications on the bottom, let's crack into it. So, nicely packaged here. We actually have a, a little molded pulp element on the, uh, the roof of this, which is holding it kind of stably in place. So, eliminating the need for a lot of other packaging on the inside. We have the, the product itself. One of the reasons I got it was so it's a little bit bigger than my uh, Boom Swimmer, but a heck of a lot smaller than this other Bluetooth speaker that I worked on for Pull, which is, sounds amazing, but just a little bit too big to kind of easily travel with. This is this kind of nice in the middle size. Uh, it's got some little interesting little, it feels like a silicone, very thin silicone. Actually didn't expect the speaker to be aluminum. I thought it was going to be plastic. So the fact that it's actually anodized aluminum, bit of a pleasant surprise, a little bit worried about how that's going to hold up and travel. I, I, one of the reasons I bought it because I thought this was plastic. Uh, but doesn't surprise me, I guess, all that much that it's aluminum because Bang & Olufsen is really known for their aluminum manufacturing processes. Um, I've heard from people that work there that they do quite a lot of this aluminum manufacturing in-house and have really perfected it. Uh, very simple UI on the top. This is, this is not a smart speaker, so which is intentional. I didn't want a speaker that would listen to me or have any kind of Siri input or anything like that. This is just a simple Bluetooth speaker, but it has an interface that you might um, think of when you think of a smart speaker. Bottom is slightly rubberized, but there's no additional foot. Feels like it might, it's like it's like a rubber coating on the aluminum, maybe. Interesting. Then this grill wraps 360 degrees around the product. I'm not sure where the drivers fire out of. So, so every speaker produces sound with something called a driver. It's a little cone that basically vibrates, pushes air, and that only happens in one direction. So uh, un unless the product um, is like an Amazon Alexa, let's say, where there's a driver that's firing downward so the sound comes out, or like an Apple AirPod or the Google smart home speakers where there's drivers all the way around, which I doubt at a product this price point, it would have that because the drivers can be quite expensive. I would assume the drivers only fire forward. Uh, I had to really take it apart to know that, but 
and if that's the case, only the forward firing, only the forward grills really matter. Kind of rule of thumb for that is you want there to be 50% um, opacity, acoustic opacity, so that the sound waves could come out. Again, sound is made from that cone, that, that driver cone vibrating back and forth, right? Having excursion, and, and then sound waves are created. That's just an air wave, and so if, if the grill is too solid, the sound is literally bouncing back into the speaker and impeding the speaker from functioning. So I was curious to get some calipers on this so we could see what we're doing here. So these are about three millimeters thick for the solid parts. And then let's get a reading on the inner parts here. I don't want to scratch this aluminum. About 2.5 in the opening. So a little bit less than 50% acoustic transparency, but still not bad. Um, you can see this, this boom swimmer that I worked on doesn't quite have 50% either. You know, if you have manufacturing limitations, this Polk speaker does. Uh, this is a, a stamped thin metal piece. This has a little bit more than 50% because uh, we actually, I know that because I calculate it, but this is pretty good. Look at a couple other little details on the product. It has this really nice webbing carrying strap here. I was curious if this would snap off. Let's see. Not permanently affixed. So, but still pretty nice and discreet. And looks like we're going to be charging with USB C here instead of USB A or micro USB. So, a little bit more, again, a little bit more premium. Nice because it will charge with my iPad charger. Let's see what else we get in the box here. So another little tray on the bottom, molded recycled paper. Probably has some information in there. I just wanna see if there's anything below this, this tray, probably not. Yeah, it's just the bottom of the box. So let's see, let's see what we get in here. There we go. So, well, instruction manual. I'm curious if it's going to show me driver compliments on this. Probably not. Let's see if I can look that up online. So just some pairing instructions, which in 2022, if you don't know how to pair Bluetooth, you may have some issues. Charging information, pretty basic stuff. Nothing about the driver compliment. I'm going to have to see I can find some information on that because I'm very curious if there's a tweeter in this thing. Uh, nothing here either. Okay, and then let's see what else we have in the box. So we've got a USB, interesting USB-C to USB-A cable for charging. No wall boards, which seems to be the norm these days. But so I have to plug this into a USB-A wall board or use a different USB-C. My laptop doesn't even have USB-A on anymore. And then a little carabiner if you want to affix this to your backpack or something like that. I also worked on another boom speaker which we, we launched with a custom carabiner. Um, kind of fun to design little things like this. This carabiner's pretty nice. It's aluminum. It's not gonna hold any weight uh, obviously just being a little aluminum carabiner, but it's nicely done, nice and clean. All right, let's pair this thing up and see how it sounds. All right, I've got it all paired up and charging, and we're just gonna test it really quick. Um, I've got these Polk Hampton desktop speakers connected, and we're gonna just compare them really quick between the two. I did a little bit of digging on the Biosound um, and it turns out it has two 1.8 inch drivers. So they, that 1.8 inch, you know, not that big, um, you know, a little less than two inches. And it, it appears that they're side firing. So it seems like just putting my ear up to it that the sound is coming out of both sides here. So the 360 degree grill does make a bit of sense. It sounds, you know, not bad. There's, there's no tweeter in it, so it's not gonna be super crisp. But let's, let's compare between the two. I picked a song 
by the Juan McLean that has some good bass as well as some good vocals so we can get a sense of what the speaker sounds like. Not too bad, you know. Bass, a little bit muddy. You're not gonna get a lot of clear bass out of two 1.8 inch drivers. Let's, let's compare it to the desktop speaker. Not a fair comparison, because this desktop speaker has a, a, basically a two inch tweeter and then a pretty large, uh, like a four inch mid-range driver. So you're gonna get a lot more bass response out of that. Let's switch over. switch back so you can hear the difference there you know we can, we can turn it up more but we'll get a little more distortion back to the desktop But, you know, honestly, for a small speaker, that's about what I expected. Um, I would have liked the bass response to be a little bit nicer, but, you know, I suppose if this is gonna live most of the time on kind of a nightstand um, in a smaller room, it'll be totally fine. I'm not sure how well it's gonna perform outside, but at least it'll be kind of easy to travel with, and that's that's why I got it. You know, I wanted something that sounded a little bit better than this, which, which uh, this, Boom Swimmer has probably a very similar driver, a 1.8 millimeter, uh, 1.8 inch uh, driver, but just one of them. It, this does have a um, a base radiator, so the the 1.8 inch driver is floating in the center of a, a radiator that amplifies the base, which I think makes the base on this sound a little bit better. But obviously, this is going to have a much clearer presentation with two drivers. They're side firing, so you will get some stereo imaging. Um, it's small enough to fit in a backpack really easy when we go on a trip, so I think that's gonna fit the bill there. All right, everyone, thanks for watching my unboxing and a little bit of testing of the Beosound Explorer. It's a really nicely made little product. The, the metal construction is really solid. The fit and finish is what you would expect from Bang & Olufsen. Uh, I wish the sound was just a little bit richer and a little bit deeper, but you know my comparison to the Polkhampton desktop speakers, not really a fair comparison. Really two different products and two different leagues, but I just really wanted to give you a little bit of a sense of uh, the, the difference in sound quality. I think this probably sounds better than a comparable product from Bose, in my opinion. It's a little bit of a different sonic signature. Um, and I prefer this kind of upright cylindrical form factor. I think it's a little bit more convenient than a long horizontal form factor that you see in other speakers of this type. Um, and again, this is mostly going to be living kind of on a nightstand most of the time in the, in the bedroom. So uh, I think it's just kind of a little bit more convenient. So hopefully you enjoyed the unboxing. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe, maybe leave a comment down below. You know, all those little things that all the YouTubers always like to say. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.